Okay, so the packages that we're going to use this morning are ggplot2 and dplyr. Okay, so last time we were we learned that some packages have with it uh, data sets. So for example, ggplot2, dplyr, and data sets itself as a package have with it several data sets. If we run this, it will yield here. Uh, so ggplot2 has diamonds, economics, economics long, faithful D, okay, MPG, which, which was what we were using last time. We can make use of these data sets in order to practice or to work on certain functionalities as far as, uh, uh, in this case, ggplot2 is concerned. Also for dplyr, okay, this can be used in order to come up with <clears throat> codes that are as a practice or as outputs using the dplyr package. And this one, data sets, marami siya, no? Okay, so many data sets uh, that come with this package. So let me just close this. Uh, close this. Okay. Then from ggplot2, where we were using... <clears throat> so we have, we're done with those guys. We... We learned that uh, that in a in a uh, plot in a ggplot, the three most important components are your data, and then your mapping, and then your object geom. And then we looked at uh, the data, uh, MPG data, and sabi natin ito city and highway are MPG no miles per gallon. Ibig sabihin how many miles to the gallon to a gallon of uh, uh, fuel. Uh, we also learned that for city, medyo mas mababa siya as compared to highway. Kasi pag city, guys, maraming stop yan. Pag highway, mas uh, tuloy-tuloy siya. So, mas, mas uh, cars are able to travel uh, longer no? on the highway as compared to city. Display, the, the ISPL is the engine displacement in liters. And we learned last time that the higher, the bigger the engine displacement, the lower will be the uh, the miles per gallon. No? So they are they're inverse uh, inversely related. Tapos the RB model etc. Okay, so these were the variables we were working on last time. Okay, so where did we stop, guys? Sampatay nas ng stop. Did we begin with chap exercise three? Um, sir, we yes. stopped at we stopped at the example the map with the class variable the color. So it's around the three hundred something. Ah, uh, okay. 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 Thank you. Do na pala tayo, no? So anyway, quick review lang nito, guys. Ah, quick review. But some some I'm not going to run anymore. So this is a basic ggplot. My data, narong mapping and then my geom point. No? So we said that pag geom point guys, dapat quantitative yung ano natin, yung mga variables natin. And then here, okay, what will happen if we plot dun sa, sa geom point natin, non-quantitative siya. Model is So let's use a glimpse function. Glimpse MPG model is okay. Model is a character variable. Manufacturer character data that when we did the uh, the other codes before, ginawa natin factor, di ba? But it's okay. So pang plinat natin to guys, magkaka problema tayo. Actually, hindi naman problema. It can still be plotted, kaso. <clears throat> Uh, ang problem natin dito, it's, it was more of the name. No? So ito parang pinaplat lang yung, ano, yung, yung Toyota with, uh, uh, with uh, what's this, the model. Okay, so ang problem natin dito guys, hindi natin masyado makita yung, yung x-axis natin. And even if we flip it, 
na-resolve nga yung naming dun sa y-axis, pero ganun pa rin sa x-axis. Okay. <clears throat> so, it was meant to just to introduce yung coordinate coordinate flip as another layer in our ggplot. <clears throat> okay, then we looked at this, di ba? Uh, these are several data sets, MPG, ginawa na nito. Si Diamonds, okay, although hindi pa natin ginamit siya, ma-access pa rin natin guys kasi nakaload yung ggplot2 natin. So, in fact, hindi ko nalinagay na data diamonds, di ba? Dumiretso na ako sa, sa glimpse, okay? Glimpse diamonds, lalabas na siya kagad. Glimpse diamonds. Even if I haven't uh, access the data, data, uh, data diamonds, since ggplot2 has already been installed, na-load na siya, then... Okay, so ito yung Diamonds data set consisting of 53, uh, around 54,000 observations and 10 columns. Ito yung mga uh, variables natin. Karat, cut, color, etc. Karat, guys, uh, if we check the summary, summary ni Diamonds. Let's see si Karat. Karat ranges from 0.2 up to up to 5, almost 5.01. Okay, and then price natin from as low as 326. Siguro per ano to, per ounce or what, or what per gram siguro up to 18,823. Very expensive, no? Ito per imagine per isang gram ng diamond then 18,823 dollars. All right, so uh, always a good practice, guys, to see what what our data is what uh, what our data is all about. Okay, so diamonds we're plotting carat and price, geom point, okay, and a transparency ratio of 0.1. So let's see how this looks like. Okay. Sometimes it's better to plot, plot it here. Plots. Ba't hindi siya lumalabas? Dali ah. It's taking quite some time kasi 53,000 yung rows natin dito eh. 54. Nag-plot na ba? Wala pa. Still running. Skip ko muna. Ito na lang guys. Nag-plot na siya dito. I'll just use this. So if you can see the plot guys, uh, you notice this one, ito yung 18,000 kanina no, sa summary. Okay, and you see the relationship. Generally, the higher the carat, the higher is the price. Exact for summary, ito guys, ito sa 1 carat no. Grabe yung variation ng ano, yung range ng prices. No? Can go as far as uh, almost 17 siguro, 18,000 to as low as mga 300 or I don't know, mga 500 something. <clears throat> so dito sa mga lower carats, no? the price can can really be uh, 
very uh, the, the range can be very very uh, big very large variance so mantalang dito guys the higher the okay guys ha? sorry let let me pause and then record you it's recording for oh, thank you <laughs> thank you Ken sorry I forgot to resume recording all right so thank you sir okay thank you thank you for reminding me so economics data set guys we looked at this so, sabi natin guys malaking tulong talaga tong question mark na to no yung help okay kahit sa mga commands sa mga functions ang laki ng tulong niya no so it it's really very difficult to memorize all no syempre mga basics mas maganda memorize yan pero uh, sa dami-dami guys ang functionalities it's an advantage kasi uh, at your disposal at our disposal are several packages and several functionalities that can come with the package with the package the uh, disadvantage there is it it really becomes very difficult to master everything kasi it's a del deluge really sa dami-dami no you just know the uh, the technique is to know where to look for it no it's not really to memorize everything, but to know where to look for what you need. Yun ang skill na dapat natin ma ano, ma-develop. Para pagkailangan natin siya, alam natin kung saan natin hahanapin. Okay, itong economics uh, data, date, take note, this is a time series. So, so mas maganda, naka geom line siya, as can be seen here in our plot here. Okay, alright. Histogram, guys, MPG din yan. Uh, anyway, i-run ko lang. Okay, so that's a histogram where we are plotting a quantitative variable. Okay, quantitative variable siya. Okay, so we know that we use the histogram, guys, if we're plotting a quantitative variable. Okay, so univariate siya, ano? isang variable lang. And then, of course, guys, we can do shapes, sizes, colors. And last time, we... We, uh, I think we discussed, guys, the distinction of putting an aesthetic under mapping and putting an aesthetic under geom. Did we discuss that? Pakichat nga, guys, kung clear sa atin yun. Okay, thank you. Kasi hindi namin na-discuss to dun sa kabilang session, kaya sorry, ah. Kaya I had to, uh, I had to go back a bit, no? Mas malayo na pala naabot natin dito. Alright, so very quickly guys, ito tinignan natin, di ba? Yung color na blue dito, pinasok natin dito sa aesthetic. Okay, hindi bibigyan ng color blue yan ni R. Ang gagawin niya dito, i-scale niya to. It will give us a, <coughs> a legend for the color. Okay, tapos dito din, uh, since nasa G yung point siya, di ba? Pero because we added this mapping aesthetic, under the geom point, it will still be read as part of your mapping. Kaya itong 1 and 2 guys, pareho lang yan ang output. No? While if we put the color under the geom point itself, ito wala nang aesthetic dito. No? Okay, ilalagay talaga niya yung color na yan. So let's run this. Run this tree. And if you notice the first one, the second one, and the third one, they're different. The first one, the second one are the same. The third one is different. Kasi, linagay nga niya yung color dun sa ano, as, as a layer. If it's, because it's under the geom point itself. <clears throat> and then guys, I gave you some notes. Clear ba so far? Sabi natin, kapag yung, uh, yung aesthetic object, linagay natin sa mapping, it will be scaled. If it's placed under the geom object, then it will be, <clears throat> bibigyan niya talaga yung ano yun yung geom uh, geom object na yan. Okay. Now, just take note guys that yung color at saka yung shape as an aesthetic will work well with categorical variables. Yung size naman, it works well with continuous variables. <clears throat> okay, so uh, pag sabihin din natin pag may maraming ano, uh, if you want to set an aesthetic to a fixed value, okay, tapos yan. Uh, <clears throat> what what did I say here? Okay. If there is a lot of data, it can be hard to distinguish with, between different groups. So we use faceting kapag uh, maram, malaki yung data set natin. 
Okay. Again, guys, sinabi ko sa inyo last time na <clears throat> less is more. <clears throat> Hindi maganda yung isang plot na uh, sabi natin napaka eclectic. Ibig sabihin maraming ano, maraming nakalagay and yet hindi na intindihan. The main objective for creating plots is to communicate. To communicate what you want your listeners or your viewers to see. You're driving home a point, you're you're conveying a message. So kailangan makikita din dun sa plot natin. <clears throat> hindi yung kung hodgepodge pa lang ng kung ano-ano, no? <clears throat> so that's what I expect guys sa paper nyo, sa project nyo. Na uh, you treat you assume that you are presenting to the uh, board of directors or to the executive officers or to your shareholders. Make sure that you you have a very important message to deliver to them. Make sure it can be seen in your statistics and in your plots. So yung output nyo guys hindi lang dapat plots and dapat may explanation. There should be insights, no? <clears throat> As, re as regards the plots. So this, guys, is important. Tell a story about the data. <clears throat> okay, so a few more exercises here. Okay, dito, guys. <clears throat> uh, displacement is a... Ano ba yung displacement? It's a quantitative variable. So okay lang ba na ilalagay natin sa color yan? Okay. Tapos J yung jitter. Pwede ba, guys? Uh, pwede naman, guys. <clears throat> and if you see here, <clears throat> yung light blue natin is the higher displacement. Yung, ano, yung, <clears throat> yung lower uh, displacement natin is in the, uh, is the uh, darker color. Pwede nyo baguhin to. <clears throat> Let's make it negative. So, marireverse, guys, yung, ano, yung, yung shade ng ano. <coughs> oh, Tinan nyo ito guys ha. So yung 7 na ngayon, yung ano, yung dark colored. No? Yung 2 na ngayon, yung light colored. Okay. <coughs> so let me adjust. Uh, or pwedeng walang plus. No? We do that. <coughs> so ano ibig sabihin nito guys? We're plotting highway and city. We know that they are, they are directly related. Kasi pag mataas yung MPG ng city miles per gallon, uh, mataas din yung sa <clears throat> highway. Okay, so they're directly related. Tapos another dimension we see here is in the shade, in the color of your, uh, in the scaling of your displacement. So ang mga displacement natin, uh, runs from a low of uh, siguro 1, 2, up to a bit more than 7. No? Ito yung mga displacement ng, in liters yung ng, ano natin, ng, ng car. And then if you notice, <clears throat> itong mga 7, andi dito siya, no? dito banda. <clears throat> what does that indicate? It indicates, guys, that yung, yung cars with uh, very high displacement, sila yung maliliit in terms of MPG. In other words, uh, per, per gallon, mas konti lang yung miles or kilometers na natatravel nila. As compared to this one, black ones, kita natin dito yung black. Ito yun, no? Ito. These are the ones with low displacements. Ibig sabihin, konti yung fuel consumption nila, konti yung, yung uh, displacement in terms of liters. So the cars are able to travel uh, higher MPG, higher mileage, Ibig sabihin ito, kaya niya ng 40 to 50 miles sa isang gallon. Ito guys, itong mga to which are light blue, maliliit lang siya. No? So sa <clears throat> city driving, mga 5 lang siya. <clears throat> 5 kilometers lang, uh, 5 miles per 1 gallon of gasoline. So uh, ano, ano, makikita natin dito yung relationship between the two variables and also another dimension added here is yung displacement. So it adds, uh, it adds more information, more detail about the data that we're looking at. No? Just by the addition of <laughs> the aesthetic na as a displacement under mapping. <clears throat> okay, ito guys, shape, 
displacement is a quantitative variable. We said that this will not work. mag -e error to kasi hindi pa pwede yung shape sa quantitative variable. If you want to use shape, dapat ang shape nasa categorical. Like class. Class is a categorical variable. Kaya pwede natin i-shape to. Kaso, sabi natin last time, <clears throat> ang shape may limit yan. No? Up to six shapes lang. Ito, yung SUV natin dito, wala nang shape na ma-assign sa kanya. So, may limitation yung shape up to 6 lang, guys. Anyway, guys, may hirap ma-distinguish para sa atin. Hindi ganun kaganda, <coughs> kaganda yung visual natin as compared to other creatures, other beings. <coughs> like bats, no? Or like, ano ba, uh, mga animals, no? Like other birds, magagaling yung, yung cats, no? Magagaling yung ano nila ng, <coughs> ng depth. Siya sa visual sila as compared to us. So, may limit yung shape. Pwede natin gamitin yan. Best to use for categorical variables, but not more than six. Okay. And then, here guys, uh, kanina shape natin si color. Hindi pa pwede, no? Color displacement. Pwede ba to? Okay. Ay, sorry. Sorry, nagdalawa na pala to, no? <coughs> ito guys, uh, dito pwede natin gawing ano, sa aesthetic. So aesthetic natin, dalawa yung, yung <coughs> layer natin. <coughs> si size, displacement, <coughs> in color, displacement din. Okay, so displacement is, <coughs> is scaled in terms of size. So yung mga 7, Malalaking circle sila. Yung 2, yung maliliit. Then also the color. So dalawang dimension guys. Displacement in terms of color. Uh, uh, displacement in terms of color. And displacement in terms of size. Okay, I think uh, that did tayo umabot last time. Ano? So pause muna ako guys. Any questions? Clear ba so far? Thank you. <clears throat> okay, thank you. <clears throat> Alright, faceting guys, dalawang klase yan. No? Faceting, meron tayong facet wrap at saka facet grid. So, depende yan sa <clears throat> purpose natin. Parehong okay naman siya, pero mas ginagamit yung facet wrap. Pero ako, I find facet grid also helpful. So, facet, ano natin? Facet wrap. Alam natin na ang pina-facet natin should be, guys, categorical variables. Huwag tayong magpa-facet trap ng quantitative variables kasi although gagawin din ni Arian kaso wala siya masyadong uh, utility, no? Usefulness. Kasi if you have, for example, ang yung yung continuous variable nun yan, ang value siya from 1 up to 1 million. So that means gagawa siya ng different classifications from 1 up to 1 million. It doesn't make any sense, no? So here, we are pinaplot natin si displacement versus the highway using G yung point. <clears throat> and then, ikaklassify pa ni, ano to, ni, ni R in terms of class. So, iba't ibang plots ng uh, displacement at saka highway in terms of class. So, let's plot this. Facet trap. So, ito, no? So, these are the classes. Two-seater, compact, mid-size, etc. So, this is telling us the plot of the highway and the displacement per each of the classes. Okay, so kung gusto nyo guys na dinidistinguish, kunyari, <clears throat> this, uh, this could be uh, referring to countries. So, kunyari, ASEAN, gusto natin makita yung, kunyari, yung GDP and then yung population, so that's GDP per capita. Okay, GDP yung, uh, abin natin GDP is the y-axis, the x-axis is the population. Pag kunin natin yung plot na yun, and then i-facet natin siya, kunyari by the ASEAN countries, then that's useful kasi makikita natin yung iba't ibang GDP per population for the different, say, ASEAN countries, etc. So may gamit tong GDP, uh, itong facet wrap na to. So there's another kind, guys, yung facet grid. Okay, ito yung facet grid. So this, we're plotting the same thing, but <clears throat> ang gagamitin natin si facet grid, and then tilde, class. If we run that, ito yung lalabas. No? 
Take a look at this. Pakiramdam lang sa inyo, guys. Okay. <clears throat> what do you notice? How was it plotted? Plinat dia by column, ano? Yun. By column yung ano natin, yung yung class. Okay, two seater, compact, size, mid size, etc. Okay, ano advantage nito, guys? Itong facet grid. What's the advantage? What can you easily compare? What can we easily compare, guys? Okay, makukumpare ka agad natin yung <clears throat> yung y-axis. Okay, uh, y-axis ba? Highway miles, but which in particular? Is it the y-axis or the x-axis, guys? Ang red the kung... displacement, sir. Hey, sorry, sir. Is it the displacement, guys? Kasi ito mahirap natin makompare to kagad dito, ano? Ang kitang-kita kagad natin yung x-axis yan, no? guys, di ba? Kasi iisa lang yung, ah, sorry, yung y-axis, guys, no? Kasi iisa lang yung, yung y-axis niya, ito lang, no? Uh, 20, 30, 40. Ito lang yung y-axis niya. But take a look at the x-axis, di ba? Parang individual x-axis to, eh, di ba? Right, guys? Iba-ibang x-axis to. Tama? <clears throat> so ito guys, ang arrangement nito, uh, yung arrangement guys, based on kung sino lang isang beses sinasabi. Ito 20, isang beses lang yan, 30. So this is horizontally arranged, di ba? So dito, maganda guys, yung, yung facet grid na to, itong tilde class, kung, uh, kung ang gusto natin tingnan yung y-axis. Horizontally arranged to. Yan o. Oh. Horizontally arranged. So, kita natin guys sa uh, that uh, sa MPG na let's say mga uh, more than 40, let's say 50, ang uh, meron lang yan si compact at saka si subcompact. Okay? So, in terms of high MPG, medyo anong nanguna dyan si compact at saka si subcompact. Kasi maraming ano sila, maraming data points na matataas yung miles per gallon nila. Okay, samantalang dito sa lower, ano, lower uh, highway, guys, MPG in the highway, marami dito sa pick-up at saka sa, sa SUV. Ibig sabihin, sila yung mga guzzler, no? Ibig sabihin, sila yung ma, ma, mahihi, malalakas yung konsumo. Konti lang yung MPG nila, konti lang yung travel nila per gallon. So, kita natin dito, guys, comparative kagad, no? Sa facet grid na to, yung y-axis natin or yung horizontal. Okay? So, ito guys, yung class, itong tilde class, pareho lang yan sa dot. Lagyan nyo nga guys ang dot. Dot tilde class. Then, iran natin. Let's see what happens. It's the same, di ba? It's the same. Tama ba? Could you can kind of chat guys kung pareho tayo? Okay, pareho, no? So again, guys, yung dot, then tilde, this is what we call horizontally arranged siya. Tapos, maganda yan kung ang kinocompare natin yung nasa y-axis. Kasi na, nasa y-axis, guys, yan yung nag-determine nag ng horizontal lines. No? Okay, the other one is ito. Itong tilde dot. Okay, so pakiganto nga, guys, no? Kopihin nyo na lang, tapos maglagay tayo dito ng, para may comparison tayo, quick comparison. Okay, so this is, uh, okay. So yung una, guys, uh, ito na yung vertically, ano, vertically arranged siya. Ito yung kanina, yung horizontally arranged. And then, i-run natin. Copy paste lang, guys, then i-reposition nyo lang yung, ano, yung uh, facet grid, ano natin, determ de determinator, no? facet grid and then 
this is vertical this is horizontal okay let's run this okay yung vertical guys yung una tingnan yung vertical what can we compare out of that yung displacement di ba right kita natin dito yung 2 no so sa 2 guys dito sa 7 sa 7 sino lang meron displacement na 7 so si 2 seater lang yung may display, displacement na 7 liters tapos dito sa more than 6 meron si SUV tapos dito karamihan si SUV at saka si pickup si compact guys wala siya mga ano no ang displacement lang niya hanggang more than 3 okay ganun din si mid si mid size although si mid size mayroong more than 5 dito okay si ano naman si uh, what's this uh, compact no karamihan din sila niya uh, what's this subcompact karamihan sa kanya nasa uh, low displacement lang no Okay, so clear yun guys. So it depends guys. Okay, so which is the better of this? Yung facet grid na horizontal arrange or yung facet grid na grid na vertically arrange? The answer is it depends. Ano ba yung gusto nyo i-compare talaga? Kung ang gusto nyo i-compare, guys, yung highway, yung MPG, okay, which in our case is nasa y-axis. And then ito guys yung ano, ito yung uh, yung that tilde or tilde lang. Okay. Well, the other one is the variable tapos saka natin linagay yung tilde and then that. So, this is for vertically arranged. Ibig sabihin na vertical arranged, guys. Vertically arranged. Ibig sabihin we're comparing the comparing along the x-axis. Ibig sabihin, compare along the x-axis. Yung tinitingnan natin, guys, yung x-axis. No? Well, on the other hand, this one is control c control v This is horizontally horizontally arranged. Compare, we're comparing along the Y axis. Okay. Okay. Any questions about that, guys? Yung facet grid. Okay. And of course, guys, you can also facet along two variables. No? So, ito. Two variables, to. So we have this year, okay, and then the, ito yung ano natin, ito yung drive, no? Four-wheel drive, front wheel, rear wheel. So two, two dimensions to. So medyo mas mahirap din yung ano nito, yung, yung pag-interpret, no? May limitations tayo, but uh, uh, we can, guys, kung pero talagang medyo, you will have to exercise more effort. Hindi siya ganun ka-apparent ka din. Okay, kunyari sa 1999 guys, ano makikita natin? 1999. Okay. Most of the cars were yung sa forward guys, yung 1999, marami, marami yung MPG niya. Okay? Meron siyang matataas na na MPG Tapos, yung displacement niya, mabababa. For the uh, forward of, ah, uh, oh, sorry, forward, front pala, front wheel drive. Tapos yung mga rear wheel, okay, mabababa yung ano niya, mababa yung mileage niya. Tapos matataas yung ano niya, yung, di, yung uh, displacement. Okay, front wheel, rear wheel, four wheel. Yung four wheel, uh, ano, no? uh, medyo 
distributed yung displacement niya. Pero, yung mga four-wheel guys, mababa din yung ano nila, yung MPG niya. Okay, so, a, a lot of things, guys, you can, ano, ano, you can, you can discuss here in several aspects. No? So, kailangan nga lang, medyo, medyo, ano, medyo, uh, you have to be very patient. So, kanyari, if we're comparing between 1999 and 1998, in terms of F, front, front wheel drive, masasabi natin na, in 1999, there were instances of front-wheel drives na, na cars uh, that that uh, that had low displacement and very high high mileage. As compared to year two, 2008, okay, uh, dito sa 2008, medyo wala na yung ganong klaseng kotse, no? Meron pa rin tayong mga kotse na ano na na mababa yung displacement nila, pero wala na yung mga kotse na maabot ng 50 yung miles per hour. Okay? In fact, dito sa 2008, uh, meron tayong dito na sa front wheel drive, meron na tayong mga ano, mga kotse na matataas yung displacement na it was not present during the 2009. Siguro development ng, ng models to. Cetera. So you get the point guys in how you, you compare. Okay, so that's what I'd, I'll be expecting, guys, from your from your project, no? Okay. All right. So let's uh, anyway, guys. Okay, you can do that. Okay, this is a geoms, guys. So geoms, very important uh, third component of your plot. So, so far we have looked at geom smooth, geom box plot, histogram, frequency polygon, guys. Have we discussed that? Paki chat na lang. Kung nakadiscuss na tayo ng, ano, ng frequency polygon. Have we done that before? Ang frequency polygon yung line. Okay. Baka nakadiscuss na tayo. Anyway, very quick uh, review of frequency polygons. Okay, hindi pa. Sige. Anyway, I'm going to introduce some other uh, geom objects here. Okay, sige. thank you. Thank you for informing me. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, uh, we have, of course, alam na natin geom point and geom smooth. Alam din natin, guys, na ang default nito is a smooth line, no? Lowest, hindi yung LM, na, hindi yung LM method, hindi yung straight line. Okay, and then ang default then, it will include the confidence interval. So pag ganito lang guys, ang ina-expect natin na plot is just like this one. Diba? So highway displacement, we know that they are uh, inversely correlated, inversely related. The higher the displacement, the lower will be the MPG, miles per gallon. Mat malaki yung displacement sa nasasakyan. Mala mas malaki yung gas consumption nun. Mas malaki yung gas consumption, mas maliit yung matatravel. Highway, in highway driving. And then, dinalagay niya yung, uh, yung smooth line na to with the confidence interval. 95% confidence interval. <clears throat> okay. Then, let's... Uh, okay. Pwede natin ilagay, guys, yung span, no? Itong span, it will give a plot that's more, uh, span can be between 0 and 1. Pag 1 siya, yun yung default. No? Hindi siya, re, hindi siya uh, sensitive sa mga pagtataas ng data points natin. Pag mababa yung span, guys, sensitive yan sa, ano, sa, <clears throat> sa ups and downs ng data natin. So if I run this, So, ito yung first run. No? Yung span is equal to 0.2. Okay, you notice guys na hindi siya ganun ka-smooth. No? In fact, parang medyo sinusundan niya yung concentration ng data. Okay, so this is, uh, this is still a JM smooth. Kaso nga lang, we redefined it with the span. No? Okay. Uh, Tignan natin ha. JM
Let's see if it gives here. Pag wala dito guys, pwede nyo mag-google, no? Let's see if it gives here. Ayan, span. Okay. Ano ba yung span? Okay, let's see the definition. Ang span is controls the amount of smoothing for the default lowest smoother. Smaller numbers produce wiggly, wigglier lines. Okay, so, sunod siya na sunod siya data. Larger numbers produce smoother lines. Okay, so that's what the span function, uh, span parameter gives us in geom smooth. So kapag 1 guys, yung 1 yung isa, okay this one, yung kanina lang, no? Ayan yung default. So that's your lowest, L-O-E-S-S -S natin. Alright, then, uh, ito, we discussed this before, kung gusto natin yung linear model, yung regression line, then we have to use the LM method is equal to LM. So this will give us the regression line, which we're going to discuss in greater detail when we go to regression in R. Okay. Uh, clear, guys? Clear? Clear yung geom natin, geom smooth? Okay, chat na, guys. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Then, we have an, also another topic, yung box plots, although na-discuss na rin natin tong box plots na to before. <clears throat> Sabi natin, box plot, this gives us the five number summary, di ba? Okay, so, uh, yung box plot natin dito. Yata box plot to. <clears throat> Okay, so let's let's take a look at this, guys. So we have here drive. This is a categorical variable. Highway is a continuous variable. Okay, when we plot jitter here. Okay, so you have here <clears throat> your categorical variable na nasa x-axis natin. Four-wheel drive, front wheel, at saka real, rear wheel drive. And then plotted against your your highway MPG. Then, some notes about this uh, data. Makikita natin dito, guys, na ang medyo mga guzzler. Pag sinabing guzzler, guys, ma malakas sa consumption. No? Itong mga, ano, itong mga four-wheel drive. Okay, notice that concentration nila, mababa lang yung MPG nila. Tapos, ang medyo matataas yung mga front-wheel drive. Yes. Si, uh, si rear wheel, Halos, halos pareho lang siya ni ano ni ni <coughs> four wheel drive na no? medyo ma matitipid guys yung mga front wheel drive sila yung matataas na MPG no? 40 <coughs> etc okay so that's a geom jitter so we we plotted <coughs> the uh, Categorical variable drive uh, with the quantitative variable highway. So for box plot nito, hey, alam natin yan guys. Ito yung five number summary. First quartile, median or second quartile, third quartile, and then the whiskers here. And then you have here some outliers based on two key. Okay, C4 at saka C rear. <clears throat> walang ano, walang, walang outliers. So, makikita din natin dito guys yung median ng, ng true enough guys, yung median ng front wheel drive mataas. Ibig sabihin yung pinakagitna ng value niya uh, and dito, no? higher than the four wheel at saka wheel, wheel, rear wheel. At may mga outliers tayo dito. And even here. And then the violin guys, the violin is an interesting plot. <clears throat> so this is the violin. Makikita natin dito yung density ng data at saka yung distribution. So dito marami yung concentration ng data dito. Sa <clears throat> sabihin natin mga 26, 27 
Dito naman, sa four-wheel drive, hindi dito siya. Less than 20. Si, si rear wheel, medyo uniform siya, no? Uniform. So parang uh, equally distributed yung data natin dito sa rear wheel. Okay, so we can see here, guys, na yung G yung violin natin, makikita natin that, dito yung density and of course yung distribution ng data. Yung data. And we can combine Okay, may mga strengths and weaknesses yan. No? Uh, sabi natin si box plot, maganda to kasi kitang-kita kagad natin yung first, second, third quartiles, the maximum, the minimum, and also the whiskers. No? Tsaka yung mga outliers. In one plot, kitang-kita natin kagad siya. Si Jeter, guys, sabi natin, sinishake niya yung data. Meron siyang, ano, meron siyang advantage, especially kung overplot plotted yung data natin. Pero pag masyado malaki yung data set, no? medyo hindi na rin siya effective. So it's, it's best with uh, relatively small data sets. And then the violin, guys, as I mentioned a while ago, okay, re very rich yung display niya. No? Pero medyo may difficulty din na i-interpret to. Now let's introduce this, itong sign na to. Okay, this is coming from your GeForce package. So kung wala pa kayong GeForce, guys, GG, GG Force, paki-install na muna and Install and then require. So install that packages, GGForce, and then library, GG, GGForce. <coughs> so let me give you a few seconds for that. And then paki, paki chat guys kung okay na kayo. Kung na-download yun na si GGForce. Of course, guys, helpful lagi si GJ Force. Okay, no documentation. Okay, minsan guys, hindi na linalagay. Okay, so subukan daw yung double, ano? Okay. Uh, no, notice ko pag package, it's best to use uh, two, two question marks. Ito na ba yan? It's taking so long. Dating ko. No documentation. Okay. <clears throat> Wala raw, no? Ay, kanina pa pala. Yan, yan. Okay, wala. So, you have to check the, ano uh, guys, yung internet na lang. So, why don't we do that very quickly? Sir, di ba isang question mark lang po? Uh, ayaw niya na isang question mark. Eh. Minsan, ayaw niya. Eh. Ito, nag-isang like, question mark lang ako. Sabi niya, you could try double question mark. No? When I try double question mark, no results found. Ibig sabihin, wala pa siyang documentation dito sa CRAN. But, I'm sure sa internet, meron niya. Yeah? GGForce, package. Alamin na natin kung anong ano niya, guys. <clears throat> okay, ito no. Bakit kaya hindi siya nag-appear dun sa ano? Ha, ah, ganun ba? Ah, uh, yung sa iba sa inyo nag-work daw yung one question mark. Okay, that's good. Okay, sa akin hindi guys eh. Ito, no documentation. Huh? Ah, wait, sandali. Ha, okay, ka muna ha. Okay na? And then, sige, subukan ko. Ayan, okay. Hindi ko pa pala na, ano, sorry, hindi ko pa pala na re-require siya, guys. Sorry. I wasn't able to call it a while ago. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. So, apologies, guys. Hindi ko pa siya na, na ko-call, na naloload. <clears throat> okay. So, what's GG, GG Force all about? <clears throat> so, magandang Support siya sa ggplot, visual data uh, investigations. The, this focus has led to a lack of, the aim of ggplot is to aid in visual. This focus has led to a lack of facilities for composing specialized plots. Collection of uh, mainly new stats in geoms that fills this gap. All additional functionality is aimed. Okay, so yung nga example guys, ano? Uh, yung, G, yung geom, if you... Uh, Yan natin ha. Question mark. 
ggplot2, then uh, geom sina. Okay. Here I'm saying, hanapin niya nga si ggplot2, itong si geom sina. Okay. Wala siya nakikita, guys. <clears throat> Kasi, uh, it's not, it does not appear in geom, in ggplot2. Pero nasa ano siya? Nasa geom sina. Okay. Ah, nasa GG Force pala siya. Sorry. So, wala pa siya masyadong documentation dito. Okay. Although may example dito, guys. No? <clears throat> What's good with the help, guys, is that you can run. Nagbibigay sila ng example. Tapos, yung data niyon either available siya in one of the package or you'll just create a data frame. For example, ito. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, you can run this, guys. Subukan nyo ito, ah. And then it will give you several examples. Katulad itong Geom, Bezier, and then G, ano pa ba dito? <clears throat> Isang example lang yata ito. But you can learn from this. No? Okay, but I won't run this. Uh, yung, mga yung mga things that you can do on your own, guys, <clears throat> uh, gawin nyo na. No? So, but Geom Sina is with uh, GG plot, uh, GG Force. So we can, we can run this. Uh, a while ago, yung wala pa yung ano, yung wala pa yung GG Force guys, pag sinubukan yung i-run to, this would not have run. Okay, so let's try first Geom Sina. So what's Geom Sina? Yun. Wala sa GG Plot to to ha, guys. Sabi ko nga si uh, GG Force, it fills the gap. Yung mga ibang ano, ibang uh, yung mga ibang plots na hindi available sa GG Plot with the uh, uh, reinforcement of GG force guys makakapagplot na tayo ng iba iba-iba so my suggestion is you can of course use this sa paper nyo okay uh, asa na yung ano niya yung reference ito reference manual GG force <clears throat> there ayan guys no iba-iba no yan Ang daming dinagdag, no? Ito yung Geom Sina, guys. Yan. 77, control F. So, let me take a look at it. Okay, ito 77, no? Geom Sina. Some settings can result in disappearance. Okay. Okay, yan, guys, no? The sign up plot. Data visualization chart suitable for plotting any single variable in a multi-class data set. It is an enhanced jitter strip chart where the width of the jitter is controlled by the density distribution of the data within each class. So parang jitter siya, okay? Kaso ano siya, no? Restricted na, G, na jitter. So hindi siya, hindi niya siya shake yung data. Uh, Actual na ginagawa niya, yung density ng data natin, pinaplot niya. So going back here, ito. Ito yung guys, so di ba nakita natin, so parang similar siya sa anong plot? It's similar. Geom violin. Yes, correct. It's similar to the geom violin, kaso nga lang, point siya, no? So it's a jitter na violin. Okay, pero wala yung ano niya, wala yung, wala yung outline. No? So that's a geom sign up. And it's not available in ggplot2, but rather it's available in ggforce. Tapos maraming pang iba, guys. Ha? Maraming pang iba. Unfortunately, we really don't have the... Hindi naman kasi ito, ano, this is more of a data analysis. So tinatamaala natin yung mga important points niya ng ggplot2. So uh, siguro, guys, it will take a lifetime really to learn or master ggplot2. Kasi uh, laging, nag, ano, laging nagkakaroon sila ng, ano, ng additions, the enforcement. This is the beauty of R, guys. This is the beauty of R. So, this would have been very difficult to plot in in Excel, no? In Excel, hindi mapaplot yung anong yan. Yung, kasi sa Excel, yung drive at saka yung highway, isang point lang yan. Ito yung density linalagay niya, no? And so, that's the advantage here. Okay, tapos, uh, it, ito, guys, ito, Ito naman yung pangalawa, this is, 
Dali. Okay. Uh, Plata natin itong tatlong to. Ah, huh? uh, wait. Uh, I don't think I, I included this. Diba? So, I'll give you uh, a few seconds to <clears throat> copy this. Yung tatlo. Okay, okay now guys, we have a copy already. Okay, paka check now guys kung ano. So if we run everything here at the same time, run ko na lang lahat. Okay. So yung una guys is just your geom sina. No? Second one, you're combining geom violin with your jitter. And then define natin yung width ng jitter and with the alpha. Yeah. Okay. So you notice guys yung jitter guys. Uh... Diba, sineshape niya. Tapos pwede natin ilimit yung ano niya, yung width niya. Tinan nyo to. Linimit lang niya sa 0.1 lahat yung, ano, yung width. If you change this, gawin natin 0.5 for example. Uh, kaso, mawawala yung iba. Okay. Sige, diba rin na. Okay. Look, diba? Sinake niya yung, ano, yung, yung data set natin. Okay, so let me just go back to point one. And then run everything. <clears throat> okay, and then here is the third, guys. It's a combination of your geom violin and yung sina. Well, it's a very good way to present the distribution of your data. Okay, you can use that, of course. Sa ano nyo, sa, but remember, ang pinaplat nyo dito, guys, dapat meron kang isang quantitative at saka isang Categorical variable. That's a good way to plot. Uh, aside from the uh, bar plot, <clears throat> which you learn. Okay. Uh, I leave you guys uh, as an exercise. Pwede nyo lagyan ng color yan. You can fill that with color. Okay, so again. Now, next guys is themes. Ano ba yung ginagawa ng themes? What does the theme function give us the theme layer okay now dito so that's uh, my ever helpful uh, coach si theme si ano si help function ayan theme guys ah hala hindi lang iisang theme guys ayan tingnan niyo okay magsawa kayo diyan guys sa ano niya sa so pwede niyo i i uh, is set yung line, rectangle, text, title, aspect ratio. Yung aspect ratio, guys, ginagamit yan kung para pag, uh, let's say, pag uh, in-increase yung size ng, ng pag kinapipaste yung, yung plot, tapos in-increase nyo o din-increase nyo, hindi nagbabago yung, ano, yung, yung shape niya. Hindi nagbabago yung, yung resolution niya. So, importante din yan, guys, to create a good plots. Aspect ratio. And then you have here yung axis title. <clears throat> For X, kung gusto nyo sa top, sa bottom, sa left, sa right. For Y, so you have several choices here, guys. Yung tick marks, guys. Yung sa axis nyo, yung tick marks. Yung lalabas yung mga parang maliliit na mga lines. Pwede nyo rin ano yung length niya. <clears throat> okay, so at your disposal, guys, are so many. Yung legend, pwede din natin modify yung panel, pwede din tayo mag-create ng panel guys, kung yung grid no? yung grid para magkakalines yung ano natin, yung yung plot natin, meron din dito yung strip, okay, tapos dito, ang maganda may explanation no? may explanation dito and then not only that may examples pa 
Okay? So dito ang ginamit niya, empty cars. So empty cars, I think, is from sa ano to? Ano ko lang, ha? From what? Uh, nakalimutan ko kung anong package to. Empty cars is from, yan, from data set siya. From data set. So you can easily, you, you can easily perform, guys, yung yung example dito kasi readily available naman yung data set na yan. Okay, that's, that's really a very good help, no? To those who would like to really learn more about this. So ito, P1 daw is, ito yung data natin, ito yung, ito yung uh, mapping natin, weight and the MPG plus, ito yung G yung point plus, aggregation ng label. Okay, so it plots si P1, and then here, P1 na lang ng P1 plus, yan, several themes, no? Okay, my plot title dito, my plot background, etc. Okay, guys, do spend some time, guys, just uh, running this, and makikita nyo, guys, magagamit nyo rin yung diniscuss dito dun sa paper nyo. Okay, you can change the theme, uh, yung axis line nya, axis text, axis ticks, etc. No? Legends. Okay, strip. Okay, so it's just... Uh, uh, ang magpre-prevent lang sa inyo guys para mas matutunan more about yung themes guys is yung interest nyo. No? Your interest. Okay, let's uh, move further guys. Okay, here is an example. Okay, <clears throat> run lang natin to guys tapos sinabi ko naman sa inyo kanina to axis axis uh, uh, dot text, dot x, <clears throat> and then depending on guys, dot x, element text, element text, ito naman yung title, then you can change either the size, the color, etc. Okay, so dito, nalagay yung label, y lab, y label, highway consumption, and then si x daw, si text ni x. So ito guys, si text ni X, no? Element niya, size 15. Tapos yung title niya, ah wait, ito pa rin title, no? Title ni X, uh, 15, color is 2, so that's red. So ganun din yung sa title, text size is uh, 15, and then color is 2. Okay. All right, guys, questions? <clears throat> okay, we're on the, uh, uh, we're on time to, ang goal natin, guys, matapos natin to, no? So our goal, nasa, nasa 487 na tayo. Our goal is to finish this, pero kung hindi, okay lang, no? Uh, at least masabayan natin uh, the other section. Okay, so... Balik ako dito. Uh, for your assignment, guys, pag hindi natin natapos to, kindly, uh, i-run nyo na ha, subukan nyo i-run. Okay, para pagkatapusin natin to next meeting. <clears throat> next meeting and then, na ba ako? here, histograms. No? And then, pakitingnan na lang din guys yung maps and heat maps. No? So, ito yung discussion natin next meeting. This will take us siguro mga, ano lang, mga uh, 20, 30 minutes yung heat map and then we go to dashboards. Okay, so let's go back here. Okay, so histograms. <laughs> uh, frequency polygons, I don't think we have already discussed that, pero histograms guys, alam natin yan na we use histograms for Dapat, quantitative yung variable natin. No? For example, this, ggplot, mpg, uh, highway, okay, ito yung mpg per highway, sa highway. And then here, histogram. Okay, so nasa, ano siya, nasa geom, ano? So let's run this. Uh, ito naman, uh, may frequency polygon naman yung nadagdag na layer dito. So let's run both. So, tingnan natin yung difference sila. This is your regular histogram. And this is your frequency polygon. 
So yung frequency polygon, guys, it's a line no? joining the... So parang histogram siya. Tapos ang dun sa midpoint ng mga bars natin, yun ang kinoconnect niya. Okay. So this is how your data looks like using both your histogram and your frequency polygon. And you know, geom freak poly. Ginawa natin yung red. Para, <clears throat> linagyan ko lang ng red color guys para kita ta natin yung line. Eh? Okay. <laughs> so sabi natin guys, pareho lang naman yung ano, yung histograms at saka yung ano, yung yung frequency polygon. Okay? In fact, yung frequency polygon is the line version of your histogram. So you can also, con just like the histogram where we can control either the wind beams or the bin width, no? ito, bin width na 2.5, ibig sabihin mas malawak yung histogram natin. So mas konti yung lines na to kasi it will occupy more, <clears throat> more, uh, mas ma ma makukuha niya lahat yung kagad yung range ng data natin. Compared to bin width is equal to 1. So, let's run both of this. So, bin width is equal to 2.5. Okay. So, ito yung width ng histogram natin. 2.5 siya. Mas malaki. So, kita natin na si, ano, si frequency polygon. Mas konti yung lines niya. As compared to a frequency polygon equal to 1. No? <clears throat> yung bin width niya. Okay. Clear yan, guys. Okay. So you very well know guys, makikita niyo mo kung ano yung ano, yung ano yung shape ng ng histogram natin just with a frequency polygon. Of course guys, mas maganda kung naka-layer sila pareho ano kasi mas mas kita natin. Pero some prefer just the frequency polygon, some prefer just the histogram. Uh, personally in some cases I prefer putting them both on, on the same plot. <clears throat> okay, so all right. Ah, uh, itong density guys, it's just also like a frequency polygon. Kaso nga lang, uh, smooth yung line niya. Okay, so iplat natin tong tatlong to. This we know already. And then ito uh, density. And then ito finasya trap natin si histogram. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so this is the first one. Okay, this is your frequency polygon. Kasi, okay, minap natin si color, di ba? Uh, drive. So color natin yung drive. Eh, tatlo yung drive, di ba? Four wheel, uh, front, at saka rear. Ayan. So you have three, three plots here ng frequency polygon natin. Okay, ito naman guys, yung pangalawa, it's a geom density. So, it's a smooth line. Hindi siya yung uh, lines na na frequency, ng geom frequency poly, frequency polygon, uh, polygon, yes. Ito naman, geom density. Tapos yung tatlo guys, ito histogram naman, finasya trap natin by drive uh, in uh, one column. Yan. So we have we have seen this before. Okay. So kita natin where this is vertically uh, arranged, no? Vertically arranged. Yeah. Okay, we I think we discussed this already last last term, no, last meeting. So yeah, so differences. This is the frequency polygon. This is the geom density and this is the histogram. Okay. Then you have bar, bar charts. <clears throat> so, ginagamit natin guys yung bar charts kapag categorical yung variable. No? And then, anong plot nito? Si G yung bar, bar guys, may ano yan, may, it has a default statistic, ano? It has a default stat. Pag G yung bar, ang default niyan, count. So kahit natin hindi sinasabi na bibilangin niya, automatic yun, bibilangin niya yan, si manufacturer. No? So i-run natin ito. Diba? Ilang klaseng manufacturer? 13. So ito binilang niya. No? Yan. 
It's a count of the different manufacturers, 13 all in all. Tsaka kung ilan yung manufacturer nila. Dodge has the uh, biggest in terms of uh, uh, number of uh, uh, na nagawang ano, nagawa, nagawa ni Dodge na sa data set natin. Okay? Alright. Now, <clears throat> let's create an object called let's call it uh, drugs. So, si drugs uh, we're creating a data frame. <clears throat> yung variable na drug equal to ABC. So, this is categorical. Character variable. Ito naman effect 4.29.76.1. This is a numerical variable. Okay. So, pwede tayo guys mag... Uh, let's run this. Okay. I can see now that I have now drugs here. Three observations. Two variables. Okay, if we run this, do not edit it down. This is what we did. No? Okay, so <clears throat> when we run this, ggplot, yung data natin na drugs, drug on the x-axis, effect on the y-axis, g yung bar. Okay, what does it tell us, guys? What does it tell us? It returns an error term. No? Bucket. What do you notice about the y-axis, guys? Yung effect. What's the nature of the uh, effect variable? Anyone? Your effect variable, guys, is defined na siya, di ba? 4.29.76.1 <clears throat> Alam natin kung ano na yung value na, ano na yung count ni ABC. Pag ginamit natin si G yung bar guys, ang gagawin niya, ang default stat niya kasi is to count. So magbibilang siya. So magkakaroon ng conflict. Kasi bibilangin pa ni G yung bar ulit something na na-associate natin with a particular uh, numeric, numeric variable, yung effect. That's why it's returning an error term. So if you want Guys, kung gusto nyo parang i-ano yung G yung bar for drugs, ang gagawin nyo, <coughs> we have to insert this, stat is equal to identity. Ang ibig sabihin ng stat is equal to identity, huwag na niyang babaguhin. Uh, si G yung bar, do not anymore use yung default. No? Ang gagamitin niya na bilang yung binigay natin dun sa data. Okay, clear yan guys? Clear? Pakichat nga kung clear? Pwede po pakiulit. Sige, thank you. Thank you. I'll repeat. No, sabi natin, si G yung bar, guys, merong associated dyan na statistic. Yung statistic na yon count. So that's why, pag pinapaplat natin si G yung bar, na-notice nyo na hindi naman natin sinabihin na count, pero binibilang niya. Diba? Again, back to what we did a while ago. Ito. Asa na si G yung bar natin? Sa na yung G yung bar natin? <clears throat> okay. Sa taas pa. Anyway guys, <clears throat> sorry ha, nahirap pa na ako mahanap. Uh, kasi magta-time na. So I just want to make this clear. Na si G yung bar guys, automatic yan. May stat na statistic na ano dyan na, na, na default siya. So without us telling uh, G yung bar to count, binibilang niya yan, no? Ang problema dito sa data natin si drugs, meron ng predetermined na count. Ayan, no? 4.29.76.1. So, in order for us to plot that, kailangan isama natin to. Stat is equal to identity. Ibig sabihin nun, wag na, siya, wag na niya gamitin yung default na statistic na count. Basta gamitin na lang niya kung ano yung count na ando dun sa drugs na to. No? So, run natin to. Okay. So, notice that it now creates your bar plot. Yan. So, this is 4.2. This is 9 something. And this is, yeah. Okay? So, clear to guys? Clear? Clear ba? Yes, pa. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, tandaan nyo guys, ha, si Geom Bar, although si Geom Bar pa lang naman, uh, so remember, every type of Geom has a default statistic with it. <laughs> so, kung ang ipapaano mo kay R is a predetermined data, Make sure to include this. Kung saan man yung G yung 
geom object na yan. No? Para hindi niya gagawin yung default statistical function niya. Of course guys, pwede naman din yung data na to, naka geom point lang. Okay. So, it's already time guys. It's already time. So, so my eye, yeah, I'm, ay hindi pa, hindi pa pala, sorry. <laughs> Kala ko 12.25. <clears throat> we still have four minutes, no? So, ito, let's take a look at this. So, economics, guys, sininan natin yan. Uh, okay, sige, kahit yung head na lang, head. So, ito yung data niya, no? You have the date, <clears throat> the personal consumption, population, average uh, savings yata to. And then, unemployment, uh, unemployment, this is uh, median. And then, unemployment data. Okay, so, <clears throat> you can look at the glimpse, progna. So, dito, GG yung GG plot, guys. Data is G economics. Then, aesthetic natin, yung uh, x-axis natin is the date. And then, yung y natin is a ratio of your unemployment divided by the population. So, this is your per capita, no? Unemployment per capita. And then, a geom line. <clears throat> okay, so, let's, let's run this too. So this is the, ito yung date at saka unemployment median. Okay, on the other hand, this is your per capita. No? Okay, so uh, notice guys yung why natin dito, it's, it's a computed, no? It's a computed value. Unemployment divided by population. All right, then a uh, few more things here. <clears throat> okay, ito naman yung path, no? Uh, okay, to examine this relationship in greater detail. So if we want to see, guys, uh, yung, yung relationship nito in greater detail, we would like to use, to draw both time series at saka, uh, at saka yung... Uh, wait, pulling yata itong sentence ko. Ah. Draw both time series and yung line and yung date niya and yung time, time frame niya on the same plot. We could draw a scatter plot of unemployment rate versus length of unemployment but then we could no longer see the evolution over time. So ang gagamitin natin dito guys, gagamit tayo ng path object. No? Yung path guys, itinetrace niya over time. No? So parang kinonect lang natin din yung, ano, yung, yung mga lines. Kaso, ang kaibahan na to, guys, tinan nyo ah, so take a look at this. Okay, geom path, geom point. Maglalagay tayo ng path. Tapos ito, okay, yung color gagawin natin gray. Tapos yung point, maglalagay tayo ng aesthetic dito. No? Uh, oh wait, sorry. Uh, this is just uh, two, two plots to. No? Ito, color natin is here based on the date. So let's run this. Okay, this is very interesting. Okay, tingnan nyo ito. Okay, hindi dito apparent, no? <clears throat> Talagang nakakabigay ng ano yung color. Dito hindi natin masyado kita yung kwento nito eh. Pero tingnan nyo ito ngayon guys. Tingnan yung kwento na ito. Okay, take a look at this. Okay. So linagay natin parang finasset natin si year. No? So 1970, ito yung mga black colors. No? Ito. So ito yung 1970 guys. We can see that the uh, per capita <clears throat> unemployment per capita and dito yung unemployed median. Okay. Hindi yung masyadong tumataas no? yung unemployment. Pero yung 2010 na, ito na yung light color. Ito na. <clears throat> okay. Tinan nyo guys. No? <clears throat> So what's this? Nung 2010 guys, over time, tumataas siya. No? Nung, 20, uh, nung 1970, halos walang galaw. Oh. May increase pero not, not that much. Then 1980, hindi natin medyo makita yung ano. No? But it's it's here, this one. Medyo mataas, may, may taas din siya. Higher than 1970. Pero makikita nyo guys sa ano? 
sa 2010, very, very glaring. No? Very glaring na, na yung increase niya as compared to the other years. So this is a, a comparison of the use of GGPath and Geom Point. Pinagsama natin. Okay, hindi yung Geom line ang ginamit. But a combination of the path and the uh, point. Okay? So let me end here, guys. Uh, it's already 12.31. Uh, Pakiano, guys, from 5.92. Kindly uh, try this. Pakiaral, guys. Yung difference na siyan. Madali lang naman yan. X, ano lang yan, guys. X label. At saka X limits. Y limits. And then this one coordinates. Okay? May, pol may polar coordinate tayo for circles. Okay, so kindly look at that, guys. Kasi next meeting, ano na lang to, guys, no? So we'll just spend mga five minutes. So I'll assume already that you already worked on this. This is a map, guys. Example ng map to. You can plot maps sa R. Kailangan lang natin alam yung latitude at saka longitude. So try try also doing this. Yung, yung <clears throat> ibang ano, guys, ibang yung the, the last data <clears throat> because this is all about mapping. So subukan yung gawin yung map ng Philippines. No? Map and heat maps. Okay? So with that guys, we end. Uh, hindi natin natapos pero konting-konti na lang to. Five minutes na lang to next meeting. Okay, tinan nyo lang din guys tong ano ha, tong, tong themes, no? Okay, this is also part of themes. Alright. Uh, so sige, let me... Let me stop the recording. <clears throat>